Hello there, my RPG lovers, and welcome to another video. The Vikings time period is a perfect setting for a new Assassin's Creed game, and that's a big emphasis on the word new. Older Assassin's Creed games definitely wouldn't work in this setting, but ever since Origins, Ubisoft changed the whole philosophy of this series. Valhalla has almost nothing to do with the Assassins, but I personally don't have a problem with this, because I was never a huge fan of older Assassin's Creed games anyway. But when they started to include RPG elements in this series, they got my full attention. And since I love everything related to Vikings, AC Valhalla was a must play for me. I really didn't expect to see a lot of changes from Odyssey, I thought only the setting will be a major change, but the gameplay will probably stay the same, for the most part. However, Valhalla changed almost everything. For better or for worse? Well, let's find out. Eivor is the name of the new main character in Valhalla. You can choose to play as a female Eivor as well, but I play through the game as a male character, so I can't really comment on the female performance. This time around, you also have the option to let the game switch between male and female characters as the story progress, which is an interesting option. Since I completed Odyssey with Cassandra, who was a way superior character to Alexis, I really wanted to play Valhalla as a male character. In the beginning, I wasn't really convinced that Eivor is a good character, he seemed a bit bland, for the lack of a better word. But after just a couple of hours in the game, Eivor became one of my most favorite main characters from this series. The actor behind Eivor did an amazing job to bring this character to life and, more importantly, make him likable and believable. The bold sons of Ragnar bellow to sound the spear din and the thunder of shields, so let fall the arrow storm. The battle begins. I got the feeling that you never actually know for sure what Eivor is like because he has a certain dose of mystery behind his personality. This is largely because of the actor's performance and partly because of the story itself. But the choices you have to make as Eivor are usually pretty straightforward. The story starts off with Eivor as a kid. Your clan gets slaughtered and somehow you survive the vicious wolf attack. This is how you got your nickname Eivor the Wolfkist. The simple revenge quest in the beginning might seem like it's going to overstay its welcome, but fortunately that's not the case. All of this is just a big tutorial, where you can learn how most of the features work. The tutorial segment was pretty good, only the assassin part felt really out of place. And that's a weird thing to say, I know. It doesn't take long before the story gets a lot more layers of depth. You sail off to England and your main focus is to expand your influence there by building your settlement and pledging alliance in different zones. But meanwhile, Eivor has its own personal issues, which will take you on a totally separate and unique questline. Ubisoft just couldn't miss the opportunity to somehow include the famous Norse mythology in a Viking game, which was to be expected. It's a nice change of pace from the regular storyline in the game, and I think it's done pretty well actually, although in some parts it's kinda predictable. That's not the case with the regular storyline. Each major zone in the game has 5 story chapters. You will try to make a name for yourself and your clan by working with other Vikings like famous Ragnar Sons, but with Saxons as well. There are some really interesting and unexpected plot twists and some of your choices have a huge impact on how a certain chapter will end. Overall, the story of each chapter is fairly interesting and you'll have some meaningful choices to make in a lot of situations. Not to worry, we have a Martian of our own! In order to avoid any serious spoilers, that's all I have to say. Some chapters are more interesting than others, but for the most part, I think they did a pretty good job to keep the story engaging and varied throughout different zones. When you make a pledge to a certain zone, you will start the first chapter. The alliance table might give you the impression that you have a lot of freedom when it comes to choosing different zones, but that's not the case. You're actually quite limited because of the power level of each zone. You will need a certain power level for every zone if you don't want to get completely destroyed. This makes you feel a bit limited in the beginning, but the game opens up more as you play and you get your power level up. Odyssey felt more open from the start, but the story was a bit all over the place. Valhalla offers more focused experience, I guess, but you still have a lot of freedom when it comes to exploring the world and choosing what quest to solve. See, more fresh mold. Same as in the fields on the cars. Each zone in the game is really big with varied terrain that's interesting to explore. You have mysteries, wealth and artifacts to find. I was pleasantly surprised to learn that most of these activities are not just busy work. You will find decent side quests, optional boss fights and interesting locations to explore. 
mysteries can be really interesting with some light puzzle elements. But I really enjoyed finding wealth and gear because these locations are usually pretty fun to explore. I guess this is a good segment to mention the graphics. If it's not obvious already, the world in this game looks absolutely amazing, if you have a decent hardware at least. I actually had to get a new GPU so I can properly play the game. My old GTX 1060 had only 3GB of VRAM and that was not enough for Valhalla to run properly even on 1080p. But if you have the same GPU but only with 6GB of VRAM you'll be fine, on 1080p at least. That's one of the reasons why I'm a bit late with this review, the game was almost unplayable before I got the new cards. Now I can run it on Ultra with RTX 2060 that I got from a friend. Instead of just talking about the graphics, here are some handpicked scenes from the game. The atmosphere that the game creates is just amazing and it's not hard to see why. That being said, I much more prefer the vibrant color palette in Odyssey. The graphical style of Valhalla is quite different and it kinda favors the gloomy and dark style. That's understandable because it's more fitting for this middle age setting. The weather effects are great and I like how the clouds are creating their own shadow on the map. The character models are not amazing but good enough for this huge open world game. There is a lot to like when it comes to the visuals in the game. I can say the exact same thing for the music. I'm a big fan of Einar Selvig's work ever since I watched the TV show Vikings. The music he created for that show will stick with me for a long time and I didn't expect any less from soundtracks in Valhalla. Whether you're exploring, sailing or fighting, you can always hear appropriate soundtracks that add to immersion of this setting. I honestly think that Ubisoft couldn't pick a better man for the job. None of this actually matters if the gameplay loop is not good, right? AC Valhalla did change a lot of things when it comes to the gameplay, but let's first talk about some features that stay the same for the most part. If you're coming straight from Odyssey, you will notice that Valhalla has a similar culty system, but there are some noteworthy changes. While Odyssey adopted this system as one of the main chapters in the story, Valhalla made the whole system feel more optional. It still has a big role in the story, but not as much as in Odyssey. And it actually merged two gameplay systems from Odyssey. Mercenaries from Odyssey got replaced with Zealots, and you can find them on the same screen. They are really challenging warriors that you can fight, but this time around there is no actual bounty system. This means they won't chase you all across the map, you can find them in specific places, and they will always attack on sight, unlike in Odyssey. One of my biggest critiques for the mercenary system in Odyssey was the lack of context behind them. They felt randomly generated, with no personality at all. But they were a nice addition to the gameplay. Valhalla kinda improved on this, mostly because they added short cutscenes when you kill them. And their number is much lower than in Odyssey, which also makes them more unique in a way. But killing them doesn't feel so rewarding and that's because of the new gear system that Valhalla introduced. There are some good and bad things about the new gear system, so let's start with the goods. Unlike in Odyssey, Valhalla is not throwing gear at your face all the time. I'm pretty sure there are no random gear drops at all in Valhalla. This makes the gear more unique for sure and it's always exciting to get a new piece of armor or a weapon. But it's kinda hard to get used to, especially if you played Odyssey right before Valhalla like I did. You have the option to purchase the locations of gear pieces from a specific NPC in your settlement or you can just find them by exploring the wealth icons. All armor pieces are classified into different categories which you can see on these icons. Apart from the set bonuses that you can get from using the 5 armor pieces of the same category, you also have the specific skills that you can get for them. For example I'm using the armor that falls into bear category and I try to further improve my stats by getting these specific skills. But we'll talk about the skill tree soon. There are runes that you can enhance your gear with and it's basically like engravings from Odyssey but you don't need a blacksmith to put runes in your gear. You can also enhance all items by yourself as long as you have the resources that you can get in the world. This really encourages you to collect all pieces of iron that you can see on the map. 
but in order to increase the rarity of your gear, you will need to visit a smith and offer him some rare ingredients that you can usually find in raids and specific locations on the map. It's a decent gameplay loop, but I kinda miss the gear system from Odyssey. I mentioned that killing zealots doesn't feel so rewarding because you don't get any gear from them. And that's probably the main reason why I actually missed the gear system from Odyssey. I liked how you could target specific mercenaries or cult members to get certain gear pieces. But don't get me wrong, Odyssey gear system was far from perfect. You had to change or upgrade your gear very often in order to keep up with enemy levels. It's not like you don't need to do that in Valhalla as well, but you won't be able to find a ton of gear all the time, so you'll need to upgrade what you already have. I had like 10 or 15 hours of gameplay without finding any new armor pieces and I don't think that's good in my opinion. So in conclusion, they went from one extreme to another when it comes to the gear. I think that some gear system that's in between of these two games would be the best option. Valhalla does a decent job, the gear feels unique when you actually find it, at the cost of some features not feeling rewarding like killing strong NPCs. Speaking about killing, let's talk about the combat and character progression. I really believed that Valhalla will adopt the same combat system like in Odyssey and just change it a bit to better fit the new historical setting. But I was wrong. Valhalla introduced a brand new combat system which has some similarities to Odyssey but not to an extent that I expected, not even close actually. Valhalla introduced a new stamina based combat system and I was a bit concerned when I first heard about that. The premise of every stamina based combat is really simple but you have to nail a lot of aspects if you want the action to feel right. Fortunately, the stamina system itself works really good in Valhalla. Actually, one specific mechanic keeps it from going from very good to very bad, and that's the ability to regain your stamina with each light attack. If this specific mechanic was not in the game, the whole combat system would feel a lot different and not in a good way. In the beginning of the game, all you have is a light attack, heavy attack, special attack, plunge attack, ranged combat and your defensive mechanics such as dodging and parrying. While the combat in Odyssey felt really fast paced, the combat in Valhalla is a bit slower and more methodical because you can't afford to waste your stamina resource. It requires a bit more precision, especially on very hard difficulty. But the game is not extremely hard, even on the highest difficulty. It actually depends on how you play it, if you constantly try to attack enemies with a much higher power level, even the normal difficulty can feel really challenging. This time around there are no scaling options in the menu like in Odyssey, but I'm not entirely sure there is no level scaling at all in the game. It doesn't feel so actually, and I think the game did a good job when it comes to this. When your power level gets a bit too high for a certain zone, you can blast through most of the regular enemies with ease. And I never considered that to be a problem in an action RPG of this type because it's one of the staples of meaningful character progression, in my opinion. But there is still challenge to be found, even on low level zones you can stumble upon some really challenging enemies. I wouldn't be surprised to see the scaling options as one of the features in the future patch, because I think Ubisoft did something similar with Odyssey. But some of the design decisions in Odyssey made the level scaling a desirable feature actually, like the gear system. I think Valhalla is good without it, but we'll see what happens. I've made a separate video about combat mechanics on very hard difficulty, so you can check that out if you're interested. The combat is also really visceral, it has dismemberment and some brutal finishing animations. I think this adds to the experience and it makes the combat more impactful. Even though most of the finishing animations are over the top and some people will probably not like this. The defense meter on enemies is one of the new mechanics in combat. All enemies have a defense meter that you can break and use some pretty powerful stun attacks which will usually kill weaker enemies and seriously injure the strong ones. Your heavy attacks will do a decent amount of defense damage, but this will also highly depend on your stun stats. Another interesting addition to combat is weak spots on enemies. When you manage to hit a weak spot with your bow, you will instantly drain the defense meter on weaker enemies, allowing you to finish them off with a stun attack. You can pretty much own the battlefield when you get good at hitting weak spots. I think this mechanic should be less forgiving, especially when it comes to weaker enemies. Valhalla has a good amount of NPCs with unique fighting styles and I'm not just talking about stronger NPCs. They felt more unique and varied than enemies in Odyssey. And speaking about Odyssey, sometimes it felt like NPCs had bloated health in that game. I'm relieved to say that's not the case in Valhalla, I never felt like fights are too long because of the enemy's health pool. Except if you attack someone that has a much higher power level. But even then you can kill regular NPCs with a couple of extra hits. 
This time around, enemies are using their special attacks way more often. Making the NPCs more aggressive is a lot better choice than inflating their health pool, so this was a good design decision. The AI is pretty good when it actually works as intended, but NPCs can act weird sometimes, especially in big fights. Regular NPCs can sometimes be really slow to react, but overall, I think that enemies have a pretty good and interesting mechanics that keep you invested in fights. Like I already mentioned, a bunch of different NPCs have a specific fighting style, which is actually effective for the most part. I would say it's an improvement compared to Odyssey. I play through the whole game with a two-handed sword, but you have a decent amount of weapon types to choose. This time around you have two slots for weapons and you can combine different one-handed weapons in both hands. Two-handed weapons will require both slots, unless you take the skill that allows you to wield two two-handed weapons. Yep, that's a real thing. When it comes to ranged weapons, Valhalla brought different bow types like in Origins, you have bows with different firing modes. I actually prefer this over Odyssey bow gameplay, which was more focused on arrow types. You can still play as an assassin character, even though it feels out of place a bit, especially when you're raiding. It's not an exactly a stealthy game feature. And speaking about raids, it's one of the biggest features in the game. It can get repetitive, but only if you insist to raid everything that's on your paths. You're not really forced to raid all the time, unless you want to gather a lot of resources as fast as possible. But you can always choose to do it alone if you wish to, one man army style or stealthy assassin style. I like the fact that you actually have to think a bit before you can enter a lot of buildings. Finding the specific angle where you can shoot the door lock from outside is oddly satisfying. Valhalla also introduced a brand new system for progressing your character. I have love-hate relationship with this new system. Now you have a skill tree where you can put your points every time you level up. And you have a separate ability screen where you can assign active abilities but only after you find them in the world. Let's talk about the skill tree first. The best thing about the skill tree is the ability to make different and unique builds and you can reset it for free whenever you want. But I really don't see the reason why they decided to hide the skills. It's not a huge problem because you can reset the skill tree for free and get what you want. But I definitely think the whole skill tree should be visible right from the beginning. You decide what playstyle works the best for you, what kind of a gear you prefer and get the appropriate skills. As for the ability screen, you have to actually find abilities throughout the world before you can put them on your bar. Abilities themselves are pretty good, but I don't know if I like this new method of unlocking abilities. Once you actually unlock all abilities, this system is quite flexible, because you can change what skills you want to use at any given time, there are no restrictions. But I don't know, it kinda feels weird to loot abilities like an item in the game. And it will take a while before you get a lot of abilities, so it can feel restrictive as well. I would prefer the same method of acquiring abilities like in Odyssey, where you can actually see everything right from the start. But with the inclusion of the skill tree, the way you get active abilities had to change somehow. So yeah, like I said, love-hate relationship. I really love the inclusion of the skill tree, which is not just for passive stat increases, but it also offers you a bunch of abilities that are usually used in certain situations. This new progression system allows you to make some unique builds, which is great. Before I wrap this up, we have to talk about the settlement system, which is a big part of the main gameplay loop. You're introduced to this feature as soon as you arrive in England. The main goal of raiding is to gather resources that you need for improving your settlements. I must admit that looting huge chests just to get some materials is a bit underwhelming. Unless we're talking about materials that you can use to improve your gear, or when you actually loot some gear, which is rare. I don't know how I started talking about the gear again. Anyway, there are a bunch of different buildings in your settlement that you can upgrade, which will give you certain benefits. As you progress through the story, you will start seeing more NPCs in your settlement. One new feature that's really interesting is the ability to recruit Vikings from other players and include them in your crew. But this feature feels underdeveloped, I hope that Ubisoft will improve it in future patches or something. You can basically replace your whole crew with Vikings from other players, if you wish to. And of course, you can also make your own Viking that other players can recruit. Choosing the weapon and gender for a Viking is the only customization option. It's kinda cool when you get to raid with these random vikings that other players made, but that's about it. Valhalla does have an in-game shop, but fortunately, you never even have to open it if you don't wish to. It's mostly cosmetics and skins, but there are some actual gear that you can buy. Okay, let's draw a conclusion. 
I had a lot of fun with AC Valhalla and I'll actually continue to play the game. It brought a lot of gameplay changes that I didn't expect and fortunately most of those changes are pretty solid. Even though I don't like some of them and I don't think that Ubisoft needs to try and reinvent the wheel with each new title. Valhalla feels a lot different than Odyssey even though it still has a lot of similar features. If you're a fan of older Assassin's Creed games and you expect to find a similar experience in Valhalla, this game is probably not for you. But if you played Origins and Odyssey and you enjoyed what Ubisoft has done with those games, I think you will like Valhalla as well. I especially recommend this game if you like Norse mythology and Vikings in general. Valhalla is filled with content, so if you end up liking the game, you will get your money's worth. I will probably do another video where I compare all the gameplay changes between Odyssey and Valhalla, so stick around if you want to see that. That would be all for this review. I hope you found it entertaining and informative and if you did, pressing the thumbs up button would mean a lot. Don't forget to subscribe for more content and click on the bell icon so you don't miss any future uploads. Special thanks to my Patreons and if you as well want to become one of them, all the links are in the description. Patreon is definitely the best place to directly support my work and every contribution is highly appreciated. That would be all and I'll see you in the next one.